What's up sports fans, welcome back to the channel for another fun-filled episode of Fusion Quick Tips. My name is Sadi, and today we're going to add a few more time-saving tricks to our bag. These are in no particular order, and as usual you can use the timestamps to jump to any part of the video that you need to refer to later. And if you just subscribed recently, welcome aboard. Make sure to check out some of the beginner primers I've done in the past to get up to speed. Alright, let's jump in. Everybody in the pool. Tip number 22, AB buffers. As you know, Fusion comes with two viewers by default. Let's import some media. Picture number one, picture number two, picture number three. Turn the media pool off. All right, let's load this here. Let's load the second picture here. So now as you can see, you have two viewers and two pictures being displayed. The AB buffer means that each viewer also has two separate and independent viewers built in for easy comparison with different pictures. So let's take this image. This is loaded in the second viewer right now. And by default, buffer A. Go over here and switch to B view and load this image. So now you can switch between A and B in the same viewer. If you want to see both of them together, you can click on this button, and this is going to switch the split wipe view. So now you have both of them open. And this is useful when you're comparing color grades or color matching shots in your compositing. These buffers are completely independent of each other. So you could actually have the same image, say for example, the raspberries in A and B, and for B, you could be looking at the red channel only. Or you could have a different view let applied to one buffer on the same node. The shortcut commands for the buffers are comma for the A buffer and period for the B buffer. Forward slash activates the split wipe view. And you can also do that by clicking here. Once you're in the split wipe view, you can move the wipe by holding down the square in the center. And you can also rotate if you want. If you were to zoom in and you wanted the wipe to be in a certain spot like right here, you can hold down the control and the alt keys and click right there and your wipe will be right there. If you zoom in or out, both the buffers will zoom at the same time and same goes for panning. Tip number 23, find tools. So here we have a composition which is fairly medium sized. And if you click on the viewer, type in control F, this is going to zoom to fit. But if you click on the node flow and type in control F, this is going to bring up the fine tools utility. If I wanted to look for a tool called stroke, instead of going through all these nodes to look for it, I can just find it by clicking find next. And this will not only highlight them, but center the flow to where that node is. Okay, so let's say I am zoomed in on this little section here and I have the final output selected and I wanted to look for stroke and I wanted to go to that spot as well. Quickly uh, pan to that spot. I would hit control F, look for stroke, find next, and not only will it find it, but it will take me there so I can work on that section. Tip number 24, smart fields. Let's look at this composition. This is a cartoon vertigo effect that I'm working on for a tutorial. If you go to the glow effect right here that's applied to the text, and you look at the default values, the glow size goes from zero all the way up to 100. What if you wanted 200? You could just type that in, and this will expand the default range all the way up to 200. So now, this works from zero all the way up to 200. These fields can also take basic math functions. So for instance, if you wanted 200, divided by four, you could just type that in right there. Instead of calculating something in your mind and putting in the value, you can just use that field as a calculator as well. You can even change the value in that field without actually clicking on it by just holding down the left mouse button and going left and right. And of course, this also works with holding down the control for fine adjustments. And last but not least, you can also use this field to initiate simple expressions by typing in equal and hit enter. Tip number 25, node branching. As you know, most nodes have one single output and one single input. 
but you can take multiple outputs out of a node very easily, and this is called branching. This is very useful in making your node flow efficient and reusing the same nodes to do something similar. Like in this case, you can see that this background node is driving all these paint strokes at the same time, which you can see right here. There's lots of other uses for node branching. You could take a video signal, have three different channel booleans on it to split the, the red, green, and blue channels, do your operations on the colors, and then combine them back together. Tip number 26, hide incoming connections. Now in this composition, we have this one photo image and I'm creating a 3D parallax with it. So each of these panes are going onto image planes and then everything's getting merged onto this merge 3D node. And then I'm going to add lights and cameras, animate all that. So if your node flow has too many connections and wires going all over and you want to make it a little bit more streamlined, all you have to do is click on the node Whichever node has all the connections that you want to hide, for instance, the Merge 3D is a common contender for this technique, you just go to the last tab and click on Hide Incoming Connections. Now, when you click away, those connections won't be cluttering your node flow. Tip number 27, Color Control. Here's a composition of a intro that I just recently did. Let's say you have a composition which has a lot of these intricate elements in it. And once you're done with all your composition, you send it for final approval and your client says, oh, I like everything, but I just want a different shade of yellow or a different color. You would have to go in into every single background node in this composition, all the way from the start, all the way to the end to change the color for each of those elements, which would take forever. So how do I work around that? The first thing I do is I create a palette group, okay? And this is my master palette group. It has colors in it, nothing else, just colors, kind of like a swatch, okay? So if you go to this palette and open it up and click on it, you see that there's this yellow color that is driving all these other elements, right? Let's close this for a second. As you can see, this palette isn't connected to anything. It's just keeping information inside. All right, now let's go to this node. If you click on it, it's the orange color, but that color is connected to the first node by an expression, right? And the expression is really simple. So now, anytime I'm creating more elements, all I do is take that node, the first BG that I created, copy and paste, okay? And then I just change the name. So as I'm going, each time I create that same node, the expression comes with it, right? Now, let me show you how easy it is to change the colors once the project is done. You go back to your palette or your master colors, wherever you kept those nodes, right? And let's go and change it. Let's say your client says, oh, I want a light blue. Notice that by changing the color in one spot, all the elements all through your composition will change because the way you set them up from start to finish. Tip number 28, use underlays to organize and arrange your compositions once they become a little bit large. Let's look at this composition for instance. Here you have this composition which has a bunch of uh, sequences going on, a bunch of sections in it, right? So if you zoom in on this section, you see that there's an underlay that contains one, um, one section of the composition, and then there's more underlays within those to signify that certain things go together. As you can see here, they have different colors and they are organizing a, a fairly large composition and makes it really, really easy to work with them, right? To create an underlay, all you have to do is shift spacebar, U and D, or you could just type underlay and there you have it, okay? Now, using an underlay is a little bit more tricky. So if you click on the underlay, you can, you can size it however you want. But if you go to add all these nodes inside the underlay and then go to rename the underlay by hitting F2, it's actually going to, let me show you. Let's say I'm gonna call it two. If I hit enter, now it wants to rename every single node in this underlay. How do you get around that? To rename an underlay that already has a bunch of nodes that you've already named, all you have to do is hold down the Alt key 
and then click on the underlay and rename. Let's call it stage and hit enter and now your underlay is called stage. And like I said, you can have underlays inside of underlays as well, like I did here. And that's it for this video. Hope you picked up something useful to streamline your Fusion workflow. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like me to post more videos for Fusion motion graphics. I'm your host Sadi. Happy compositing and I'll talk to you soon.